Okay, so now begins the gearbox rebuild. So with every part I'm doing, I'm just pre-lubricating it with this mixture of engine oil and an oil additive. It's the oil additive that's like treacle, so it should stay put and not run away. So the first thing I've done is I've just put the oil over this section here and then I need to put on the smallest gear with a new split bearing. Put that on, give it a little twist, put some oil over top of that. Okay, so I've put that bearing in place. Before I slide the gear on, what I'm going to do is put the spring and the plunger down that hole. There's the spring and there's the little plunger. I think this is going to be fairly fiddly to do, so hopefully that will now slide over there, which it does. So once you've got that spring and plunger in, you then need to slide this down. Now there is a little slot there, which helps you push that spring in, so you should try and line that up with the plunger. So now it's hitting that, so I should be able to push it in. So I'm just using a very small Allen key and hopefully I'll be able to push that plunger down and slide the retaining collar back on. Nope, not quite. Covering things in oil doesn't always work. There we go, that has gone in. Now what you need to do is twist the collar around so that plunger locates in between the teeth. So again I use the Allen key and see if I can just... There you go, you heard it click. The plunger is now there, so that has locked this gear into place. So now I'm ready to put the next gear on this side, which will be uh, gear number two. So again, I've got a new roller bearing for that, or sorry, needle bearing. So I'll put that on. This one has to be split. I don't know why the other one is split apart from it's the same. So give that a bit of a oil. Then I'm going to get the plungers ready to put in. So this one's even more awkward. We have a spring and then a plunger for either side. So I'm going to put that in, leave it horizontal as much as I can. Put that one in there. And that one in there. Can you see those? Yes, you can. Right, so then I get the gear, put the gear over, trying to keep it horizontal again. Just give that a little push in so the gear slides over. Don't trap your glove like I have. Just push that plunger in to get the gear over it. There it goes. So now the plungers are down there. You can see that one. Can't quite see that one. So now I need the retaining ring. Here it is. I don't think there's an easy way. No, so I'll just put that on and try and get these plungers in. So one is already in, so the other one now needs pushing in. There is actually a hole in here that allows you to do it. So if I just turn it to there, I should be able to push that in. There we go. So you heard that click. So now that will go down. Again, like the uh, other one, we need to turn it until they both lock in. You should be able to hear this click. 
There you go. Two clicks. Come on, focus camera. Focus down here. Okay, so they've both clicked in. One is there. And the other is there. So that is both those gears now retained with new bearings as they should be. So the next big items are the synchro hubs. Now there's no point in putting this one on for three and four. I might as well wait, but I can definitely put this one on. Okay, so now I need to get the synchro hub on, but before I put the synchro hub on, I need to put a new bolt ring on. So that's my nice new bolt ring. I'll slide that on first. Give it a bit of an oil. And then put the uh, synchro hub on. I'm going to have to zoom out in a minute. So there it is. Just slide that on. So that is that synchro hub on. The next bit to do on this side is to put the top hat on. Okay, so I don't know if this is going to work, but I have just heated it up. Okay, that went quite a long way on, so that's a good start. I'm now going to get a drift and just drift that on. Don't know how easy or hard this will be to get on. It's actually going quite nicely. Okay, so as you saw, I've drifted that on. Uh, you could tell it is in place by the change in note when you hit it. I've used a brass drift so it didn't cause any damage. Make sure there's no bits of brass still remaining on it. And I can put the next needle roller on. So again, a bit more oil. that on, a bit more oil. Okay, so then it's time for the next gear, but we mustn't forget the bolt ring. Have a nice new bolt ring, put that on. And then put that on. Check everything still turns. Uh, the bolt rings are doing their job. Yes. Yes, they are. So uh, that's all looking good so far. So the next thing that will go on here is the main bearings. We can't do anything with that. I can just show you how this all goes together, although it doesn't really matter. So for the first motion or input, I could zoom in a bit now. Another bolt ring, nice new bolt ring again. Show that on. Okay, so the next thing to go on after I've put that bulk ring is the synchro hub for three and four. So that goes on, come on, like so. Then we want another 
another bulk ring. And there, bearing on the end. And then we'll put first motion back on. So that is effectively the whole gearbox built back up. Now obviously the first motion will come off anyway, but that is how it should look. So that's all I'm doing for this video. Now you've got the main shaft all built up, you then go on to building the gearbox itself. And that's for another video, which I have already done. So the last thing I want to point out, if you get confused as to which gear goes where on the main shaft, then just lay it next to the lay gears. And obviously the lay gears are fixed, so this is the big end and this is the small end. And there'll obviously be a corresponding gear with each one of those. So that will tell you which gear goes where. Also, it's worth remembering that at this end, you have a straight cut gear, which is first gear. Anyway, I hope that has been of help to uh, you guys out there and stay tuned for some more videos.